Hi, it's Sandy. Um, I'm a little bit later than I thought because I'm having internet connection issues, even though I'm sat on top of the router, so to speak. Anyway, um, I felt really drawn to do a, a Facebook Live this morning because there's been so much um, uh, exposure on on Facebook in particular with the hashtag tag me too and this is really my flavor on this is that it's really come up for our evolution this is you know it's it's this whole piece around the dance of the masculine feminine has come up as an evolutionary clearing for us as these energies start to rebalance so what's been hidden has got to come to the surface so I am sharing a little story about um, a consultation that I did um, earlier on this year that I was involved in earlier on this year and this consultation took me up to Yorkshire and to a very large um, house and grounds in Yorkshire with lots and lots of storylines because the uh, present owner had um, a, a family lineage on that particular site going back into the 1100s so you, again you know when you're looking at something that is that a, a property that's come down a, a lineage um, there is a particular flavor of that so I'm just waiting to see whether anybody else is going to be able to to get on live this morning um, uh, before I tell the the story so just a minute okay so the story goes that as I walked around the house there were lots of different flavors and different storylines that were coming up in the different spaces and you have to realize that you know this is a property that had been in multi generations and so each of the rooms as um, I went in and out had different flavors different energies and the current owner was able to say and this is where you know Uncle Stephen passed away or this is where all of the my lineage you know birthed in this room this is where the nursery was um, so fascinating stories but when we got to the billiard room the energy was so dense and dark I didn't actually even want to go into the room it was like walking into treacle it, it just incredible but it was like that really was um, a room in the house that held uh, almost like a seed point a note of, of the flavor of some of the things that had gone on in the house so actually in going into the space and and walking around this massive billiard table very dark paneled room in itself but you know as I say the energy in it was just like treacle so clearly there, this was a room that the men go to. The men go to this room after dinner. You know, so there's drinks, there's stories, and this is built up over, over time, as, as things in rooms do. You know, it's, it's like something happens in a space um, and it leaves a flavor. And then, you know, someone else running that same pattern goes in and it adds to it. So it becomes a bit like, a, you know, an accident black spot. The energy builds up and so it starts to be really tangible. So, as I stood in this room, I became aware of, obviously, the entity energy that was in the space. This, an entity energy for me is, is, is a, um, a, a dense, congested, thought form energy it's not got a consciousness in the same way that you or I would experience it um, spirit energy is for me in my definition of it is different spirit energy has had a life it's had a consciousness 
in the same way that you or I would know it. A spirit energy you can send to the light, an entity energy you can't because it wasn't created by that. It needs to be dealt with in a different way. So there were two levels of, of, of work that was being called for in this particular space. One was to clear the dense and negative uh, entity energy in the space. The other, hi Katie, hi, hi, thanks for joining. Um, there, um, but the other energy in there was, was definitely a spirit presence because as I walked in the door, there was almost a feeling of a breeze that went past me as I went in. So I stood quietly for a little while and then I became aware of this energy that had crept back in the door. And over by the corner, by the door, was this crouched figure. And he clearly was aware that I was there. And as I tuned my radio dial down to connect with him, to, to find a, a place where I could hear him, the way we could communicate, I began to feel this immense sadness that this man was carrying. He said his name was Edward and his time in visiting this particular house, because he hadn't lived here, he had been a visitor to the house and therefore had gone into the billiard room with the other men. And this, his time there went back to the 1700s and there was one particular event that had called him back, that had called him back and um, for resolution. You know, spirits, when they hang around in spaces, don't normally have, pa it's not necessarily that they've passed in the space. It's just the fact that that particular space holds a traumatic memory in their heart field, which goes to when they get to the time of leaving the body, they haven't processed out. They haven't come to resolution within the heart field. So Edward had come to the end of his, his life with this pain, with this weight in his chest around his heart for something that had occurred that he hadn't been able to find resolution for. And as I listened, so he started to tell me the story of a night when he was staying at the house and all of the men had gone into the billiard room and one of the young servant women had come in, possibly to bring them drinks or to attend to the fire. And the men had taken her, they had grabbed her and they had raped her. And Edward's pain was the fact that he knew he could have stopped it. He could never forgive himself for the fact that he could have stopped this happening. And that pain and that sense of weight of that had stayed with him for his whole life. And there having not had resolution with it, an aspect of his soul at the time of his passing didn't go on into the light realms, it went back to this house, to the corner of the billiard room, where he had stood to watch this play out. Now, part of my process there with him was the fact that he needed to tell his story, and he needed to tell his story to a woman and he needed to have the forgiveness and the heart-centered compassion from a woman to be able to release out of the matrix of energy that he had anchored into, which had enabled him to stay all of these years in the corner of the billiard room. So this was just a beautiful, beautiful process with this man, this very, actually very gentle, heart-based man. 
who had witnessed such a rough and forceful experience. And clearly his honouring of the feminine had left him deeply troubled with what he'd experienced. So my process with him was in that listening through the heart and listening to the heart trauma that he had held all of the rest of his earthly days and still had caught him from a soul perspective until he had been heard and witnessed and invited in to release. So it was a beautiful process that was completed very gracefully and enabled the tangible feeling of the space to change. So, you know, these stories are fascinating. You know, we can experience this, but in another house that I was working in, um, up in Northumberland, a few months back now, there was the story of a young girl in the stable block who had been raped by a stable lad. These things are perpetuated in these places and times, this journey that the feminine has gone on in revealing her true power and her substance and asking for it to be honoured by the masculine. So the little adjunct to this story was that uh, it was a bit later that the client actually revealed that he had a current dilemma going on because one of his staff in the office had been accused of attempted rape of one of the other staff members. So you can see that this flavour of whatever has gone on in a space actually anchors itself into the water molecules of the walls. You know, we know from the work of Emoto that water holds memory. So there is a substance. We know when we feel we go into a room that's got happy vibes, and we know when we go into a room that actually really contracts our energy. And spirit energy, when it comes back to, for resolution, anchors into the earth grids, the Hartman and Curry grids that are all around the earth that create little vortexes and eddies that the spirits can, spirit energy can anchor into that allows it to stabilise on the earth plane even though it's in a different vibration. So if you found that fascinating and you feel drawn to perhaps join me on one of my, um, my days of exploring the energies of space, there's other information on the House Whisperess page. And actually, I'm, I may put a picture of the, um, uh, the billiard room on to the, the feed here so that you can get a flavour of what the energy was like actually in this room. And um, I'm, not, um, I'm not breaking any uh, client confidentiality. I'd like to add that because the owner was very open in sharing the fact that um, there had been some house whispering gone on in his uh, beautiful um, 95 room house. It took a lot of walking around to get the flavours. So anyway, um, that's my little message for today, that actually there are some very good men out there who hold the feminine in great esteem and, uh, do you know, in all of my work with the roses, I have actually found that, you know, this is part of the evolutionary cycle. The more that we as women find our power and our voice, the more we have the opportunity of inviting the wounded masculine. Because this behaviour against women is wounded masculine, um, that there has been damage done to the, um, the soul or the child in very, very early developmental years that creates 
this um, sense of non-honouring. And the more women that are prepared to stand and stand strong and um, hold to their value and their self-worth and their, their self-love, the more we can hold the wounded masculine to his heart and to his healing and to the honouring of the feminine, the sacred other. So until next, um, with much uh, love um, and blessings on your journey, um, yeah, bye for now. Bye-bye.